Hey everyone, welcome to our full video review for the Acer Predator 21X. To kick things off, we should go over the specs of this machine. So that'll start us off with the CPU, which is an Intel Core i7-7820HK. The GPU inside is two NVIDIA GeForce GTX 1080s with a total of 16 gigabytes of GDDR5X RAM. Memory included is 64 gigabytes of DDR4. Storage inside are two 512 gigabyte M.2 PCIe SSDs in RAID 0, and there's a one terabyte 7200 RPM hard disk drive. For connectivity, there's Killer Ethernet 2500 gigabit network LAN and Killer Double Shot Pro Wireless AC 1535-802.11 Wi-Fi and Bluetooth 4.1. Powering the device is an 8-cell, 6,000 milliamp hour lithium-ion battery pack. There's a built-in HD web camera above the 21-inch curved wide full HD LED backlit IPS anti-glare matte type screen at the resolution of 2560 by 1080 with G-Sync technology. On the left-hand side of the machine are two USB 3.0 ports, headphone and microphone port, and a 3-in-1 card reader. On the right-hand side are two USB 3.0 ports and the Kensington lock. And on the back side, there's an HDMI 2.0 port, two display ports, one Thunderbolt 3.1 Type-C port, an Ethernet port, and your two AC adapter ports. Taking a look at the internal of the laptop, the front, or at least the keyboard section of the laptop, is what you'll remove, although that's not easy and I don't actually recommend you doing it yourself. But we'll do that for you here at Exotic PC, and we'll upgrade components if you want them upgraded. Inside, as you can see, we have a couple sticks of RAM that are located right here. Those are actually easy to get to with the front panel. You can just take a little slip off the front. You can easily get to those two, along with one hard disk drive that is actually mounted right here. That you could remove and upgrade it if you wanted solid state memory, or if you just wanted a larger capacity to save more stuff, you could do that as well. Then if we take a look at the rest of the laptop, once you have the keyboard and the front face off, you have the battery pack located over here on the right hand side. We have a big, 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 that's the definition of what's going on with this whole laptop. Um, fan right here for one of the GPUs. We have our CPU in the middle with a couple of copper heat pipes that come off and go across over here to two more fans. One of them obviously helping cool both the GPU and the CPU as those two work together as all the air is pretty much flushed out the back or the back sides of the device. You also have two more right here too, which will be cooling actually the other side of um, the, the motherboard. And on the other side, there's two more sticks of RAM as well as two slots that will come with your M.2s. And there's actually two open M.2 slots where you could install even more memory and even faster memory. So you have lots of space for expansion actually with this machine, which is kind of nice. They left room for the ability to do that. And you can just see how it's all laid out. Of course, the first thing we should talk about is the screen. It's a 21 inch IPS curved panel with a 120 Hertz refresh rate. The curved screen is very impressive while gaming. Games look very, very good with the beefy hardware teamed up with G-Sync. I did notice some light bleed on the display, probably because it's a curved screen that has to be mounted very specifically. Despite this, it is probably the best screen when it comes to viewing angles, so that definitely helps. As for the keyboard, it's a full-sized mechanical keyboard with Cherry MX Brown switches, which are very tactile and responsive. I love when there are full mechanical keyboards in laptops. It's not amazing for portability, but it's better for gaming and typing experience. It also has full RGB backlighting that is controllable with the Predator Sense software too. There are tons of settings within the software for lighting effects on the keyboard and the rest of the laptop, like programmable hotkeys to the left of the keyboard, the lights on the back of the monitor, the edge lighting around the touchpad, and the power button and fan on the face of the laptop. The touchpad can be removed and flipped over on the fly to have access to a full-sized number pad, which is pretty neat. The touchpad itself has a very nice smooth matte finish and has very good accuracy. Let's take a look at what comes with the Predator 21X. It comes inside of this big carrying crate or travel case, you could say. It does have wheels on the bottom of it and a handle at the top so you can wheel it around with you if you'd like to take it on the go. It also has all these clips and you can lock it as well. It is pretty beefy and pretty sturdy. When you open it up, the laptop will be located on top. I have it out of the box at the moment, but then you have this Predator 21X um, little boxing that flips open and inside of it, you have like a welcome and your, uh, your 24-7, 365 service card. You also get to claim a custom panel for your machine if you'd like to get that. And then you have like warranty information guide 
and apparently don't put your baby in the box is what that says. So don't put your baby in this box. That would be bad. And then you can put that back there. Then if you remove this big top tray, down below is where you have all of the other accessories. So this missing one right now is the trackpad and number keypad. Um, I have it in the machine right now, so it's not inside this box. You have power cables or power bricks on the side, both sides, because there's two of them. You also have your power cables for those bricks down below, down here. You also have this power brick X. So this will actually house both of the power bricks if you want to put them into it. You can then store it on your desk that keeps them nice and tidy together and they're all in one place if you want to have that and it gives them a little bit of grip so they might not slide around. So you do get the X. Then you also have a lanyard that's up in here. You also get a palm rest that slides out. It has a nice like suede finish that's really soft. It also is magnetic on the, the one side so when you put it up to the face of the machine it stays um, pretty magnetized to the front of it, which is really nice. And then we have this box right here as well. Inside of this is your WASD key and space bar that are in this blue that match the laptop. It also has a key remover, so you can easily put them in. And it has a special key to remove that top panel, which then you can replace with your custom panel if you wanna get that. The weight of the laptop by itself is right around 19 pounds. If you wanna take the power brick and cables with you, you're probably gonna need the entire crate that it comes in, and you're probably looking at at least 40 pounds rolling this thing around. Battery life isn't the best, but that's because it has beefed up hardware. You can expect probably around two hours max when being careful using this thing untethered. As for the temps of the machine while it was playing games, um, temperatures were actually pretty mild throughout the whole thing. With nothing really to cause heat by the keyboard, that stayed nice and cool, with a little bit of heat up at the top where both one of the GPUs and the CPU is located by the fan. And as for the noise of the laptop, the readings were pretty good all around. Actually didn't generate very much noise out away from the laptop, down in front of it, and even off to the side of where a couple of the fans are. But when we did turn the fans up to max, you can definitely see that this thing has a lot of overhead when it comes to ramping the fans up and generating a little bit of noise. Moving on to our benchmarks, we started things off with Firestrike, which scored 19,658, which is better than 97% of all devices that have ran this test. Next, we moved on to Crystal Disk. We did sequential read and write speeds, starting off with the RAID 0 SSDs. It read at 3,322 megabytes and wrote at 2,634. And then we checked out that hard disk drive inside, which read at 146 and wrote at 141. Moving on to our real world settings, we kicked it off with Grand Theft Auto 5. We tested on very high with MSAA off, and then with it at times two and times four. We had FPS readings of 113, 111, and 111. The GPU's temperatures while testing were 76 and 77, and the CPU was at 80 degrees Celsius. Our second test was with Rise of the Tomb Raider. We tested on medium, high, and on very high. We had FPS readings of 139, 135, and 129. GPU temperatures were 77 and 78, and the CPU was at 83. Our third test was Dirt Rally on medium, high, and ultra with MSAA at times four. We had readings of 150, 116, and 115. The GPU's temperatures were at 75 and 72, and the CPU was at 74. Our fourth game was Hitman on medium, high, and ultra. We had FPS readings of 115, 105, and 100. Our GPU's temperature was at 57 and 83, and the CPU's temperature was at 73. And our final test was with Metro Last Light on medium, high, and on very high. We had FPS readings of 111, 105, and 100. The GPU's temperature was at 77 and 81, and the CPU was at 71. If you're looking to put a personal touch on your machine, be sure to check out our extensive customization options before checkout, including upgrades available to RAM, storage, cooling, overclocking, custom paint, hydro and graphic wraps, laser etching, and much, much more. If you'd like to take a closer look at any of the specific BIOS menu screens, make sure that you pause the video on the one that you would like to view closer. If not, always be sure to check out the product link in the description or to leave any comments down below if you have questions for us here at Exotic PC. I'm Andrew saying thanks for watching and be sure to subscribe for future product overviews and reviews.